Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the timer service which we are building using Spring and the Quad Scheduler library. In the previous video we have created our hello world job and we have injected the scheduler into our service that we created and we have handled the starting and the shutdown of the scheduler. Now in this video we want to create some additional stuff. Firstly, we are going to create a configuration for the timer that we are creating. For example, every timer that we create may not be the same. We want some of them to run once, we want some of them to run forever, we want some of them to run five times. And that's something that we can configure. Of course, the Quads library offers that, you just need to pass in that information. And to pass it in, we are going to use a new class where we are going to have all of the properties that we can configure and we can change in regard to the timer. We're going to call it something like timer info and let's create it. Let's create a new package and let's create the timer info class with some properties. And here we have it. So we have our timer info class with some properties. We have the total fire count. This indicates how many times is our timer going to fire. We also have run forever flag, which means that our timer is going to be running forever. If this is true, then the first property does not matter because uh, it, we can't tell how many times it's going to fire. It's going to run forever. We have the repeat interval in milliseconds. This is the indication on uh, in which interval is the timer is going to fire, like for example if you set this to uh, 30 seconds, this will fire every 30 seconds, so the timer would fire 30 seconds. And we have the initial offset, this means uh, when we start our timer, how long until it fires the first time. If you set it to 0, it would fire immediately, and if you set it to, I don't know, 100 or something seconds, it would be firing after 100 seconds has passed. Quartz is going to handle that, so we don't have to worry about it. We just have to tell it what we want. And you can see this uh, callback data. This is basically something that we want to pass to our job. So whenever we create a timer, we can store some data with it. And that data can be passed to our timer job. So to, to the, any job that we created, we can pass some data. This can be useful, for example, if you have some complicated jobs where you need to pass something at the beginning and then later on that information may change, you want to know the initial state, you can pass it in with a timer and you will always have it. And let's create now getters and setters for this class. So with getters and setters created, we can move on to the, uh, let's call it a util class, where we are going to add some methods on how to build the so-called job details where we can provide all of this information. So let's take a look at that. Let's create a new package where we are going to store our util class. So here we have our empty timer util class and in it we are going to add some interesting methods. The first one that we're going to add is going to be called build timer job. So this method is going to actually build these job details. So we are going to build the job details that will be stored together when, whenever we are scheduling a timer. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I will implement it to the end and then uh, I will explain what exactly we are doing there. And here it is. It may be a bit too much, but let's go together to it and uh, let me explain what exactly we are doing here. So we are trying to build this job detail. So this is something that we are going to be storing together with our job. We are passing in a class. This class is actually our job class. We can actually rename it, that would be uh, better. We can name it job class. So our job class is Basically, which job do you want to uh, store these details for? 
and we also have some information about it, our timer. This is important because here we are storing that callback data, so we want to have it. We can of course uh, store only the callback data here, but we would like to pass in the timer info in case if we want to restart our timer. Then you know the initial uh, values you used to create a timer and you can restart them again with it. So storing everything is uh, much better. Okay, let's take a look at what we are exactly doing. We are building this uh, job data map. So it's the map where we can put all of the data that we need for our jobs. And this is something that's going to be stored together with the timer. So to um, build it, it's basically just calling the initialization of the, so you use the new jo job data map and inside of it, you need a key and you need something to store, an object. In our case, this is the timer info and the key is just the simple name of the class. So every job will just have this uh, one entry in this map so we can use the class name. And then we use the job builder to build a new job. We are uh, again saying for which class and again it's the one that we passed in. And with the identity again something unique, in our case the job class simple name again. And uh, we set the job data, so the job map that we built here. And we say build and that's it, we have our job detail. Now in the next step let's take a look at how we can build a trigger. So a trigger is just a mechanism that triggers the job that we are building. In our case, this hello world job. So let's go back to our uh, util class and let's create a trigger method. So the method to build the trigger. I'm again just going to implement it and then we are going to go through it again together. And here we have it. It may look a bit much, a bit scary, but don't worry about it. We are going to go together through it. Again, to the build trigger method, we are passing in the job class and the timer info that we need. So from the timer info, we are getting all of that nice information about our scheduler and how we want to build it. And the job class is, we are using its simple name as a identity. So we are using the simple schedule builder with where we can provide an interval in milliseconds where how uh, in which interval do we, we want our timer to build. So basically we are building a schedule here and the interval is coming from this info. So this is something that we are going to be passing in. And here again, we are taking a look at if we want it to run forever. So then the builder has the repeat forever method, which we can use. So we can just set that if we want it. Otherwise we want to uh, do it with the repeat count. So we get our total fire count and we say minus one because the first one is a bit special. So it doesn't count, but still the timer fires. So if you want it five times, you have to say minus one. Otherwise, yeah, you will have it six times, obviously. Again, then to build a trigger, we use the new trigger from the trigger builder and we have to give it some identity, which is our simple name from the job. And we pass in the schedule that we built here. So uh, with that being done, we need to say just when do we want it to start. We are using the current time plus the offset if we have it. If this is zero, then it will be just current time and we just build it. And that's basically it. That's how we build our job details and that's how we build our trigger. And in the next video, we are going to take a look at how we can actually schedule this job. It should be super simple to schedule it with the job details being built and with the trigger being built, it should be a piece of cake. But we are going to take a look at it in the next video. If you have any questions about this, if something is unclear or if I was too fast somewhere, please do let me know and then we can uh, try to uh, take a look at it together.